After making a mint of a sports-themed tech demo, Nintendo of America had no issue pigeonholing the Wii as the place minigame collections and cartoon shovelware went to die. Gone was the era of amazing RPGs we'd come to expect from their home systems, to the point they didn't even want to publish Xenoblade Chronicles, despite its full English translation with voice acting. Thanks to Operation Rainfall, it came out at all on my birthday in 2012, albeit with a small print run and crap availability. And obviously I got the rest of the Impossible Trinity. I did a crappy unboxing of it back then, linked if you're interested. When it came time for the Switch version, North America didn't get the sweet collector's edition Europe did. But since Nintendo's head isn't completely up its ass anymore, there's no region locking on the Switch. So. Welcome to your Canadian friend's unboxing of the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition European Collector's Set. This big-ass box contains a downloadable soundtrack, a selection of songs on vinyl, a Switch-sized steelbook, the game itself, a sizable 62 square centimeter poster, and a massive 256 page art book. Damn! The box is a thin, flimsy cardboard, but it is decorated with a nice texture and some familiar designs on both the front and back of the box. Popping the top, you'll find both cases. Let's start with the one that's literally metal. I've got books of steel. Artwork of the Bionis and the Mechanis grace the outside. And inside you'll find more art and the digital soundtrack code. Visit the Nintendo Europe site where you can still log in with your North American Nintendo account and you'll find the page where you can download the individual WAV files. You get 20 songs compared to the special soundtrack CD from 2010 which came with only a dozen, but I'll get to that later. But first we need to open the little case with the familiar box art. If you thought the North American Wii version's packaging was a multilingual mess, get a load of the European Switch one. Inside you'll find the game, a warning insert, no manual, and some rather bland artwork also featured on the big-ass poster. Lifting up the two cases tray, we find the record. Love that sleeve art. There are only a dozen tracks on the record, and we'll get to them in just a bit. But first, holy crap, just look at this. This decorated vinyl looks outstanding, with Monado artwork on both sides. But before we throw this on the turntable, we have more to unbox. There's also the 62 centimeter square one-sided poster, four record sleeves big. I don't like it. A rectangular poster of the original box art would have been better. Take out the next tray to find the final big ticket item, the 256 page art book. This book has girth. She thick, bruh. Especially when compared to the pre-order bonus massive air quotes art book from the Wii version. Inside you'll find promo shots, renders, concept art, storyboards, just don't expect much in terms of explanatory text. Other than an introduction from Tetsuya Takahashi in English and French, there's pretty much nothing else to read. Still, it is worth checking out. But now it's time to face the music. Let's drop the needle. The Xenoblade soundtrack is a big deal to me. I spent more time listening to the music than playing the game over the years. And here's the thing. The 12 songs from the special soundtrack from 2010 are not all in this collection. How in the hell can this be definitive when it doesn't even have the main title music? Also missing is Beyond the Sky, the original ending theme. Then 
Those were both my favorite tracks on the original OST, and I can't tell you how many times I've listened to that CD over the years. Hell, I uploaded the YouTube playlist of the special soundtrack and I'll link it for you. Bookended by those two tumultuous songs, the original Xenoblade soundtrack is the one and only time any OST I can think of got me anywhere close to being emotionally compromised, and that includes Schindler's List. This music is all new, rearranged, but I think it's overdone. Even the familiar songs feel... off, somehow. There are horns in You Will Know Our Names. Engage the Enemy lacks the punch of the original, and the new vocals really don't do it for me. The funky Bionis' shoulder music just plain feels out of place. And yet, when I dropped the needle and the all too familiar sounds of Colony 9 came out of my speakers, a richness to a sound I've never heard before, it was like coming home again. I couldn't help but feel my eyes dampen. If the record opened with the main theme and closed with Beyond the Sky, I probably would have wept in front of my stereo. Even though I disagree with the selection of songs, the new versions of the tracks, and in some cases the songs themselves, listening to this Xenoblade record still hit me very damn hard. And that's saying a hell of a lot. The main theme does appear in game, luckily, and you also have the option of using the original or rearranged music. I really appreciate that. As for the game itself, it still feels like some Xenoblade Chronicles ass Xenoblade Chronicles. As someone who would play the Wii version with the classic controller, I sure feel at home with another SNES-inspired gamepad. Regrettably, you still choose skills with the D-pad, so you still can't move and pick skills at the same time. This wasn't an issue for people who played with the remote and nunchuck on the Wii, to the point that people preferred those over the classic controller. I think I might go into the system settings and swap D-pad left and right, with the L and R buttons. It doesn't quite look up to switch snuff. Poly counts and texture qualities are lower than I'd expect, but it does run smoothly. As someone who remembers how unacceptably piss poor the Wii version looked even for the time, I guess I can't really complain. It feels great to visit it again, and this time on a system that can at least have a chance of doing justice to the game's world and character design. No more grand vistas with PS2-ass 2D sprites for trees this time around. Honestly, this is an incredible package, and I'm running out of things to say or praise to give it, despite my few reservations. I hope we'll see Switch versions of Xenoblade Chronicles X and the other two Rainfall games in the future. More people deserve a chance to experience those. I found Pandora's Tower's atmosphere, art design, and compelling emotional story more enjoyable than generations of stagnant Zelda games. And the last story? Honestly, as much as I love me some Xenoblade, I prefer the last story. The smaller scale, scope, tighter pacing, and more human characters with various regional accents make it feel much more grounded than yet another Teenagers Save the Universe JRPG. Plus, the girls are better. No offense to Fiora and Sharla, but I'll take Marania and Seren any day of the week. Truly. If Seren was any more best girl, she'd be Vela from Vindictus. The soundtrack's omissions are incomprehensible. The game is still visually lacking technically, albeit not artistically, and this box set wasn't even available on my continent. But if you were a fan of the Chronicles, well, brother, the blade is back. I just hope it means more Switch ports in the future. I still owe Seren a beer.